Welcome to another free tip of the day video tutorial brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Rost. Today I'll be showing you how to create a matrix lookup in Microsoft Excel. A matrix lookup is sometimes called a 2D lookup or a multi-value lookup. It's a special type of lookup using multiple values. It can't be done with VLOOKUP. Instead, we'll be using the MATCH and INDEX functions. A matrix lookup is good if you want to look up a value from a table or matrix based on two values, such as a row and column. It's great for conversion tables. The example that I'm going to use in class today is converting from one type of measurement to another one. Here I've got grams, kilograms, pounds, and ounces, and the related conversion values. Using a matrix lookup, I can say, I have 30 kilograms, how many pounds is that? I'm looking up a from and a to value and getting the resulting multiplier. You could also use a matrix lookup for looking up a particular employee's sales for a particular year. Tell me what Bill's sales were for 2009. That would bring back a 34. You could also use a matrix lookup to figure out the discount rate for a particular customer based on the sales amount. For example, if ABC Corp spends $1,000, they get a 5% discount. The list goes on. There's all kinds of reasons why you'd want to learn how to use a matrix lookup. And again, in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to build a simple conversion table to convert from grams to pounds, for example. So we want to be able to convert between grams, kilograms, pounds, and ounces. So let's make a matrix or a table to represent all the different to and from combinations. There we have our two grams, kilograms, pounds, and ounces. And there's our from. Now, to convert from grams to grams, the multiplier is simply one, right? One gram is equal to one gram. Same thing with kilograms, pounds, and ounces. Now, grams and kilograms are easy because the metric system is all based on 10. So to go from a kilogram to grams, that's simply multiply by 1,000. To go the other way, from grams to kilograms, we're multiplying by 1 1,000th 1, or 0 .001. So those are our multipliers there, quite easy. Now to go from pounds to ounces, that's easy. Multiply by 16. There's 16 ounces in a pound. To go the other way, we can let Excel do the math. Equals 1 divided by 16. And it's 0 0.0625. Now to convert between metric and imperial, you can use Google. Google has a great tool. You just type in grams to ounces, for example, and it gives you the conversion rate. I'll just round that off 0 0.0356, let's say. So grams to ounces, 0 0.0356. Six, close enough. You could put the full one in there if you want to. All right, how about grams to pounds? 0 .0022. 0 .0022. And then continue filling in your chart in this manner. And there we go. Now that I have my conversion table, my matrix all set up, I can now perform the calculations I need to convert from one type to another. So I'll come down below here. I'll type in the value, the value I want to convert. Let's just say 1 for now. What unit am I going from? Well, I'll type in, let's say, grams, G. What unit am I going to? How about let's go to ounces? Now that I know what I'm going from and what I'm going to, I have to look up that value in this matrix up here. So I know I'm going from grams, so I want that row, and I know I'm going two ounces, so I want that column. So what Excel needs to do is say, hey, where in this little list right here does the G appear? What row? Give me that value. To do that, we can use the match function. Let's put that right here next to grams. I'm going to say equals match, open parentheses, what value am I looking up, my lookup value? Well, I'm looking up this value here, that G, comma. Where is my lookup array? Where is the list of values I'm looking up? Right here, from B3 to B6, in my example. 
comma, there's an optional match type. I want an exact match. In other words, that G has to exactly appear in my list. All right, so that's a zero. Close the parentheses and then press enter. Now, what does that one tell me? Well, the one says, from this list of options, the G appears in the first position. If I change this to pounds, notice it changes to a three. It's in the third position. That's what match does. Now we can do the same thing with the two. So I'll come right over here, equals match. I'm trying to find what value. My lookup value is ounces, comma. Where's my lookup array? It's right here. The match function works fine horizontally and vertically, comma. The match type, again, an exact match, and then enter. So now ounces is in the fourth position in this array, right there, one, two, three, four. Now that I know which row and which column I need, I can use another function called index to go to that position and grab the value. So my multiplier, multiplier, is going to be a combination of this row and this column. So that's going to look like this, equals index, the index function. The first bit of information that it wants is the array. Where is your lookup array? This guy right here. That's where we're looking up our values. Comma, which row inside that array do I want to look back? Well, the row is the from value. All right, pounds is the third row. Comma, the column is right here. It's the fourth column relative to that array, not C, D, E, F. It's one, two, three, four. Close the parentheses and press enter, and you can see my multiplier going from pounds to ounces is 16. It went to row three, column four, and brought back that value. If I change this to grams to ounces, you can see we're multiplying by 0 0.0356, grams to ounces. And that makes sense because a gram is much smaller than an ounce. And now the result is a simple matter of math, equals the value times the multiplier, and then enter. And if I have two grams to ounces, we get the correct value down here. Now, do we want to show all these extra values? Probably not. You can hide those. I'd put those in their own column and make them a hidden column. You could lock those columns so that your user can't change these values. You can even put this lookup table on a separate sheet so they can't tamper with this. There's lots more you can do. In fact, you could make a whole sheet refer to these values. So if you have lots of different calculations going from grams to ounces and pounds, you can do each row with its own calculation. And of course, I cover how to do all these things in my full Excel courses. There's lots more to learn. If you're interested in this topic, I covered in a lot more detail in my Excel Expert Level 4 class. You'll learn about VLOOKUP, which is one of the most popular lookup functions. You'll learn a lot more about index and match. Index and match are very powerful functions. I cover a couple more examples in my class, including how to do range lookups. That's where you don't have to have a specific value in your table. For example, earlier on, I mentioned looking up the discount rate for a customer based on their sales amount. You don't have to have every exact sales amount in your table to look up a range for the value. Expert Level 4 also covers the address and indirect functions, comparing two lists to see what's different, finding the closest value to a target value, and lots more. You can find the complete outline on my website at ExcelLearningZone.com. YouTube viewers, go to this special page where you can sign up for a free 90-minute Excel tutorial. Plus, if you decide to purchase any of my full-length courses, you'll get a huge discount. The webpage, 599cd.com slash XLMX. I hope you've enjoyed this free tutorial. Thanks for watching. There's lots more free tips just like this one on my website. Go to ExcelLearningZone.com and look for the tips section. Also, make sure to follow me. I'm on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. 
My username on each is 599CD.